mindsetters, welcome to today's Grade 12 Accounting Show. Today we have a special revision lesson on companies' financial statements. We have selected highlights of lessons shown earlier in the term to help you revise Term 1's work. Please post all your questions and comments on our Facebook page on facebook.com forward slash learn extra or on Twitter at learn extra so we can help you with your revision. Don't forget to download today's show notes on learn.mindset.co.za or click on the link on our Facebook page. Now it's time to get on with our lesson. Right guys, we're now ready to look at our first example or exercise on company ledger accounts. So let's look at the question that we have in front of us. Right, the question reads as follows. Use the information below to prepare the relevant ledger accounts of Maxdoff Trading Limited for the year ending 28th of Feb 2011. Okay, now immediately guys, what I'd like to do is, let's just quickly draw a timeline. 28th of Feb is the end of the financial year, which means the financial year started on the 1st of March 2010. Obviously, that's in the beginning of the financial year. Then, the information that is given to us, we're going to start off with balances on the 1st of March 2010. In other words, your opening balances at the beginning of the year, it included the following. So, we've got an opening balance for retained income. Retained income, remember, can also be called accumulated profit. So, an opening balance for retained income, 82000 then we've got an opening balance for shareholders for dividends. So remember guys, this is from the previous year. We're owing our shareholders 60000 in terms of dividends. And the third bit of information in terms of opening balances, SARS, South African Revenue Services, let's just call the SARS income tax. There's a credit balance of 14500 Now remember guys, if the receiver, if SARS has a credit balance, it means SARS is obviously a liability. Okay. Then, the next bit of information that we have, by the 28th of Feb 2010, MacDoc Trading Limited had issued 500,000 ordinary shares. Now, remember, this is obviously the previous financial year. So, what I'm going to do with that bit of information, I want to just record it on my timeline. So at the beginning of the year in issue, the company had 500,000 shares. Okay, right. Now, before we go on to the actual transaction, let's quickly look at where the opening balances are going to slot in. Retained income. Okay, I just want to go to my answer sheet. So, retained income, I don't have a key account for retained income. But what I'm going to do is Let's just quickly draw one. Okay, so retained income, owner's equity. So on the credit side, that's my information. The credit side, I've got an opening balance of 32000 So that's it. And a balance of 82000 Just bringing that down for later during the actual transaction. All right, the next opening balance that is given to me, okay, the next opening balance is shareholders for dividends, an amount of 60000 So let's go to our answer sheet. Shareholders for dividends. Okay, I'm going to remind myself it is a liability. So on the credit side, on the 1st of March, I've already brought down the balance of 60000 and then the last bit of opening balance is given is my SARS income tax, a credit balance of 14500 So again, to my ledger account, SARS income tax, I'm just going to quickly rename. Okay, SARS income tax, liability minus plus, on the credit side, 1st of March, balance brought down 14500 Okay, now that we have our opening balances, we can go to our transactions for the year. Okay, 
process. So let's look at our first transaction. The following transactions took place during the year. So on the 31st of March 2010, we paid the amount owing to stars and to your shareholders. Okay, so let's go to our ledger account and let's start off with shareholders and then we look at the receipt of revenue. Shareholders for dividends, we owing our shareholders an amount of 60000 We now have a transaction that tells us that we paid them the 60000 So obviously, guys, the amount that we owing is going to decrease. Let's just put a minus sign there. So on the debit side, an MT4, 60000 This would be recorded in your CPJ. Your contra account will be banked because obviously it's a payment, so the contra account must be banked. And the date that we've made the payment, let's quickly double check, it was on the 31st of March. So on the 31st of March is when we made that payment. Okay, at this point, I do not owe the um, shareholders or the business does not owe the shareholders anything. Okay, with me. All right, let's move on. The next transaction or the next account, rather, the transaction tells me that we also paid the amount owing to start. So looking at the balance, I'm owing the receiver 14500 uh, Abraham, I don't know why I keep on saying I'm owing the receiver. <laughs> Maybe you are. That's not the case. <laughs> that better not be the case. Okay, so 14500 Again, a payment has been made. So this balance has to be two. So I'm going to make an entry on the debit side for 14500 Again, an entry would have been made in my CPJ. So that's my folio reference. Contra account would be there. Okay, and the date stays as the 31st of March. Okay, guys, with me. All right, let's move on to our next transaction. Okay, the next transaction reads as follows. On the 30th of September, made a provisional income tax payment of 35,500 grand, and then they tell you that we paid an interim dividend of 40,000 to the shareholders. So let's look at the first part of the transaction. Made a provisional income tax payment of 53,500. Now remember guys, the word payment Immediately, when you see the word payment, you know automatically one account has to be banked. The second account, who am I making the payment to? Income tax is paid to SARS. So the second account that will get affected will be SARS income tax. Okay, so let's now look at our SARS income tax account. Right, start income tax. Remember, guys, I only get my tax assessment at the end of the financial year. So at this stage, I have no idea what I'm owing the receiver, but I do know I'm making a provisional payment towards whatever I'm owing. So I'm going to make an entry on the debit side for that provisional payment amount, which is 53500 Okay, 53000 500. All right, and again, journal reference would be the CPJ. It can be the general journal, and your contra account will be there. And the date that this payment was made, let's just go back to the information, it was made on the 30th of September. Let's now continue with the transaction on the 30th of September. So we looked at the first part of the transaction. Let's now look at the second part. Paid an interim dividend of 20,000 grand to the shareholder. Okay, now guys, we must be very, very careful with this entry. Firstly, there's no calculation, so that's a good part. They're giving us the amount, which is 20,000. But let's now identify the account that would be affected. The word paid. 
clearly again indicates that one account has to be there because a payment is made. Obviously, money is going to come out of your bank account or the company's bank account. The second account. At this point, because I've paid my shareholders, I'm obviously not going to owe my shareholders anything. So the second account, by paying an interim dividend, I've now incurred an expense called ordinary shares dividend. Okay, so one more time, I am going to debit the expense ordinary shares dividend, and I will credit my bank account. Okay, so let's do that. So let's go to your ledger account and let's look for ordinary share dividends. I just want to classify this account. Ordinary share dividends is an owner's equity account minus plus. It is an expense. And remember, expenses reduce profit. So on the debit side, the interim dividend of 20000 It was a payment. So again, cash payments journal. Contra account that will be affected will be your bank account, and this payment took place on the 30th of September. Okay. All right, Abram, how are we doing? Are there any questions so far? Yes, there are questions. Okay. Okay, that's fine. That's absolutely mm -hmm. fine. All right, guys, we're ready now to move on to the 1st of September. So let's look at what's happening on the 1st of September. You made a second provisional payment, again the word payment, made a second provisional payment of 57,000 won, and then they go on to tell us 100,000 new shares were issued at an issue site of 2 rand, all the money was received. Now again guys, whenever you see two transactions on the same day, break them down. Deal with the first transaction and thereafter look at the second transaction. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So you made a second provisional payment of 57,000, and again, this is obviously for tax. Okay. All right. So let's enter the 57,000. Let's go to our SARS income tax account, the South African Revenue Service income tax. Again, please remember. At this point, I still don't know what I'm owing the receiver, but I'm making a second provisional payment of 57000 to the receiver. Let's enter that, 57000 Okay, it would be CPJ, and again, it's a payment, so your contra account will be bank, and this payment is taking place on the 1st of December. Okay. Right. Hopefully the mindset is, hopefully you guys are getting this. Please remember, if you have any questions, you need to ask Abram, and then Abram will obviously ask you. Okay. Right. Let's move on. Let's look at the next transaction on the 1st of December. 100,000 new shares were issued at an issue price of 2 rand. Now guys, in terms of the major accounts that we are competing today, we're not looking at ordinary share capital. But this transaction will affect the other accounts that I have. So this bit of information is absolutely important because by issuing additional shares during the financial year, it basically means that this company has now issued more shares in terms of what it had at the beginning of the financial year. So if I go to the timeline that I have at the beginning of the exercise, at the beginning of the year, we issued 500,000 shares. We then issued on the 1st of December an additional 100,000 shares, which means at the end of the financial year, we would have now issued 600,000 shares. Okay, so this bit of information is absolutely vital because we know we're going to have to calculate a final dividend based on the new shares that were issued. All right, let's go down and let's look at the next transaction. We should be now approaching year end. There you go. All right, at the end of the financial year, 28th of Feb, calculated the net income before tax at 320,000. 
and then they tell us income tax was calculated at 30% for the year. We also declared a final dividend of 10 cents per share. So again, I'm going to deal with the first transaction. Calculated the net income before tax at 320000 In other words, guys, after completing our profit and loss account, in other words, where we took all our income minus all our expenses, we now left with a net profit of 320000 This net profit now needs to be appropriated. So we now need to spend this net profit to our appropriation account, our final account called appropriation. So let's do this back. 330000 we're going to record this in appropriation. So find appropriation, there we go. I'm just going to divide this account into debit and credit. So owner's equity minus plus. We've got a net income before tax on the credit side. An entry coming from our profit and loss account. Okay, and remember guys, this is happening at the end of the financial year, 28th of Feb. So we've now transferred our profit and loss amount. Alright, let's carry on. So we're going to use a different color. So we've done this bit. The next bit of information, income tax is calculated at 30% for the year. Now remember guys, income tax is based on profit. So our profit for the financial year is 320000 30% of that would be our income tax. So let's get our calculators out. So there we go. 320000 being our net profit times 30% to give us an income tax assessment amount of 96000 I just want to write that down. So our tax assessment or the income tax for the year is an amount of 90000 96000 96, right, That 96000 now needs to be recorded in our general journal. And going back to the transactions that I discussed earlier on, 96000 I've now incurred an expense. So I'm going to give it income tax which is obviously my expense account, and I am going to credit who am I owing this 96000 to? Absolutely correct, SARS income tax. Okay, so debit income tax, the expense, credit SARS income tax. So let's do that in our answer book or answer sheet. Okay, so let's quickly find our income tax. We don't have an income tax account. Okay, so I'm going to quickly just draw an income tax account. Income tax. Okay, remember guys, owner's equity, this is an expense. Expenses reduce profit. So on the debit side, 96000 income tax is debited, and the account that is credited will be star income tax. Let's bring this down a bit. There we go. Okay, so start income tax. I finally know what I'm owing the receiver for this financial year. So let's now fill that amount in. So again, 96000 is the amount of tax that I owe the receiver. And contra accounts mean income tax. Okay. There would be an entry in the general journal, and remember, this is at the end of the financial year. Okay, guys, please remember, when you're completing ledger accounts, it's important that you fill in correct dates, you fill in correct folio references, because remember, um, you will obviously get marked the dates, the folio references, the details, not just the amount. Okay, all right, we're almost done in terms of the transactions. So let's now look at the final transaction for this exercise. 
final transaction given to us is we also declare a final dividend of 10 cents per share. Okay. Right. Let's do a calculation first and then we look at the actual journal entry. Now remember guys, whenever you calculate dividends, we will use the number of shares that have been issued for the financial year times each shareholder in this case is going to receive 10 cents per share. So the number of shares issued times in this case 10 cents per share. Let's look at or let's look for number of shares issued for this financial year. So if I go back to my timeline, okay, at the beginning of the year, I issued 500,000 shares or 500,000 shares were in issue at the beginning of the year. During the year, we issued a further 100,000 shares, which means at the end of the financial year, the company has issued a total of 600,000 shares. So at the end of the year, when I'm doing my calculation for dividends, I'm going to use 600,000 times 10 cents, and my final dividend that has been declared is an amount of 60,000. Okay, right, not a difficult calculation, quite straightforward, but remember guys, you obviously get marked for these calculations, be very, very careful, make sure that you are doing the correct calculation, um, especially when it comes to your dividend. All right, Mindsetters, I hope you guys are enjoying this revision session. Remember, if you are struggling and need help, please post your question on our Facebook page or send an email to helpdesk at learnextra.co.za. Now it's time to take a quick break, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. I hope you are getting into the idea of revision. Please let us know how you are doing. I'd love to chat to you on the page or on Twitter. Enough of the chat. Let's get back to the revision. In this question here, we had to complete a number of accounts based on the following information. And the best way to go about doing this here is to start off by indicating your balances in the accounts that are required. Let's do that. Where's my ordinary share capital? You will notice that my ordinary share capital has a balance of 500,000 Rand. So watch. Again, guys, remember, ordinary share capital is an equity account, and therefore, it has a credit balance, and there's my balance. Now, notice, A.V., Ashraf has abbreviated. Why? Because Ashraf has a license to do that. Mm -hmm. Mindset is, you do not have the license to abbreviate. So when you are working in your activities or for the exams, please ensure that you do not abbreviate. You write in full. Right? Please, guys, remember that. Okay. So the next thing that we have is our retained income with 98,000 Rand. Therefore, in my retained income account, notice my balance. Again, on the credit side, why? Because retained income is an equity account. This means that from the previous financial year, we had retained an amount of 98,000 Rand. So my equity accounts are two. The, what makes up shareholders' equity is your ordinary share capital plus your retained income. Okay, back to my information. SARS income tax. Be very careful when dealing with this account here because this account could feature in two places. What am I referring to? Watch. And yes, A.V., I'm sure you remember my acronym, A.V. Mm -hmm. You do? Yes. R -T, T F Q. Read the full question. Yes. We won't swear now, won't we? Okay, A.B., so we won't use yes. uh, an expletive. <laughs> we'll just stick to read the full, full question. question, okay? Right, so now, what does it tell you? It tells you that SARS income tax is a debit balance 
of 15,000 Rand. Watch this mindset is when it comes to your SARS income tax. In this case here, watch my balance is on the debit side of 15,000 Rand. What does this mean? It means that SARS owes us money. And that's the important part. So you can see, at this stage here, your SARS income tax is an asset account. They are owing us money, therefore a debit balance. Okay? Is it possible for the SARS income tax to have a credit balance? Certainly it is. If we had underpaid SARS from the previous year, then that account would, would be indicated by means of a credit balance. So keep this in mind. What do you keep in mind? That when we are dealing with SARS income tax, always make sure that you know whether it is a debit or a credit balance. Like I alluded to early on, it could either be a debit or a credit balance, depending on what had transpired in the previous financial period. Okay, shareholders for dividends can only have a credit balance because it is a liability, period, nothing else. So let's go to our shareholders for dividends and let's put in the balance on the credit side because it's a liability. And what was the amount that was due to them? Let's check it out. 85,000 Rand. Therefore, in this account here, my balance is 85,000 Rand. Okay, so once I've set in and put in all my balances that were given to me, I now go to my transactions. One, the amount due to shareholders for the dividends were paid. So, guys, you've done some work on this uh, last week with one of my uh, co-presenters. Now, all that I'm doing for you now is I'm just showing you I want to get into something that's really important for this lesson here. So, we're going to pay the amount that is due to the shareholders. Obviously, how much are you going to pay? You're going to pay the amount of 85,000 Rand and therefore, your detail here will be bank. Okay? You've paid them the amount that was due. Look at the other part of the question. What does it tell you? It tells you we also received a refund check from SARS for the amount due to us. Something different, isn't it? Because generally you think you're only owing SARS. In this case here, they are owing you, therefore... Notice in that in your SARS income tax account, you now have a contra entry. And what's my double entry? I'm receiving fulus, money. Okay? Mula. Debit my bank account. Why? Asset increasing in value. Credit SARS income tax. There's my entry. Can you see I'm receiving the money from them, an amount of 15,000 Rand. Okay. So that's done and dusted. Let's carry on with the question. Income tax details are as follows. The company paid the first provisional tax amount of 280,000 Rand. Where do we go to? Two accounts involved, SARS income tax and bank. We issued a check. Bank is being credited. I'm going to debit my SARS income tax account, bank, and the amount is... 280,000 Rand. Okay, next one. What happened now? A second provisional tax payment was made for 290,000. Okay, so let's go to that one now. In my SARS income tax account, once again, a debit to SARS income tax, 290,000. Let's just check if that amount was correct. The amount, the second provisional payment of 290,000, that's right, 290,000 in my SARS income tax account, 290,000 Rand. Detail will be bank. Okay, so these are provisional payments that are made to SARS. Identified by means of asking yourself, a check was issued, credit bank, start with a known. What are we debiting? We are debiting the SARS income tax account. Why? Because these are at payments that we have made in advance. Okay, on with the question. So, we've dealt with that one, that one. The income tax for the year amounted to 600.
100,000 rand. When you receive your tax assessment at the end of the year, what is important to note is the entry that you're going to make regarding that particular transaction. Let's see what it is. So, income tax, we said, is an expense to us. Debit income tax. So immediately, I go into my nominal account. Which nominal account? Income tax. Debit it with 600,000. Watch. Debit income tax, 600,000. Detail, SARS, which is an accepted abbreviation, income tax. Okay, so it's a debit to my income tax. Reason, because it's a nominal account, decreasing, it's an expense, decreasing equity, therefore debited. Who do I owe it to? I owe it to my SARS income tax. Watch here, there's my income tax entry. And the amount is 600,000 rand. Now remember, what happens to the SARS income tax account? It is a balance sheet account. So grade 12s, all that you need to do is to balance this account. Add up debits and credits. And then obviously, once you've done that, you can exactly see whether it ends off with a debit or a credit balance. We're not going to go into this account because I'm sure you can balance that account. However, what is important to note is this one here, the nominal account. What happens to income tax? Remember we said it's an expense. If you remember, early on I said it's a special expense. Meaning what? It's an expense that's unique to a company. Therefore, you can't take it to profit and loss. Come on, what's the answer? I can hear them shouting out the answer, Avi. <laughs> that's right. The answer is, guys, appropriation, which is a special account dealing specifically with the company. My entry, therefore, is a debit to my appropriation account. Watch this here. Income tax. And the amount is 600,000 Rand. A debit to my appropriation account. And yes, you're right. A credit to income tax, 600,000. Where have I taken it to? My appropriation account. Now let's clearly identify the two transactions here. One, where we debited income tax, this one here, and credited SARS income tax. That was my adjustment. Remember that? Okay, two, where I closed off income tax to my appropriation account. That's what I call a closing transfer. Now watch how, how rational accounting is. How easy it is to understand. What am I doing to income tax? I'm closing off the income tax account. And what am I doing? I'm transferring it to where? To my final account, namely my appropriation account. There it is. So the second entry is a closing transfer. Got that? Brilliant. Let's carry on. Okay, so we've dealt, dealt with all of that. Okay, then we are told that th this was 30, being 30% of the net profit. Okay, we'll do that calculation just now. Let's carry on with shares and dividends. What are we told? We issued 40,000 no power value ordinary shares for 240,000 Rand. We sold more shares. Okay, that we know goes to my ordinary share capital account and its bank because we are receiving money and the amount for that is 240,000 Rand. So here goes, let's do the entry for that one, 240,000 Rand. Double entry, debit, bank, credit, ordinary, share capital. The equity is increasing. Right? Next one. Issued another 50,000 shares at 8 rand per share. Obviously, 50,000 times 8 will give you an amount of 400,000 rand. So therefore, you sold more shares. Let's do that one there. Bank. And the amount is 400,000 Rand. Got it? Okay. So that one is done. 
and that one is done. The directors decided to pay an interim dividend of 140,000 rand. Guys, a dividend was paid. So the, the, the moment a dividend is paid, it means that a check has been issued. Okay? Immediately it tells you. What does it tell you? It tells you that you now have an account called ordinary share dividends. Watch, my contra entry is bank because it has been paid and the amount that we paid was 140,000 rand. Okay, let's enter that. 140,000 rand. Okay, so what do you understand from this year? That the moment a dividend is paid, immediately you credit bank and you debit your nominal account, which is your expense account. Okay. Now what are we told? After investigation, the directors realized that the shares were undervalued in the market and they therefore decided to buy 45,000 shares for 333,000 rand. Aha! The buyback of shares. How do we go about dealing with this particular one? Watch this carefully. Step number one. The moment you have a buyback of shares, the first thing that you have to do, grade 12s, is to calculate the average price of your shares. And how do we do that? Very simple. We do that as follows. Watch. Look at your shares. The value of your shares was 500,000, 240,000, and 400,000. So what do you do? You add back the value of your shares. Let's do that. So we had 500,000. One more zero, I think. That's right. Plus, what's the next amount that we had? 240 and 400. Okay, so let's do that. 240. 240,000 plus the next amount that we have there is 400,000 plus 400, 1, 2, 3, and that equals to 1,140,000. Okay, so 1,140,000 is what? The value of the shares. How many shares does that represent? Let's look at it. It's represented by 100,000 plus 40,000, that's 140,000, plus a further 50,000, that's 190,000. So what do we do? Watch this here. We divide this by 190,000. What am I doing? I'm taking the value of my shares, right? Dividing it by the number of shares, and let's do that, divided by 190,000, and this gives me a value of 6 rand per share. And this is what we refer to as the average price of the share. I'm sure you've seen the Walk Together photo on our page. Please post a caption and like the captions that you think are best. The three captions with the most likes will each win a pair of tummy tackies. We'll post the winners on Friday. So get to liking and get all your friends to like too. Now it's time to take a break, so don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back from the break. I know you can't wait for the term to end and for the holidays to start. This year, we bring you revision sessions from Term 1 from the 28th of March till the 6th of April. These will be repeats of all the Learn Extra live shows from Term 1. These programs will run from 9 a.m. in the morning till 7 p.m. at night. Go to our website, learn.mindset.co.za, for all the details. But for now, let's get back to the revision. Guys, what are we going to do now? I'm going to highlight salient features on the balance sheet that you would normally find in your exams. Let's look at this one here very carefully. What are we told? 
we are told that the loan statement from Superbank on the 30th of June reflects the following. One, it tells you that your balance at the beginning of the year is the 384000 Then you've got your interest that has been charged to that account, which has been capitalized, of 57600 right? Then you are told that your monthly payments in terms of the loan agreement, right, which includes the interest, right, is an amount of 105600 and therefore your balance at the end of the year is 336,000 rand. Now remember, whenever you are doing a calculation or you're doing anything with a loan, what is it that you have to remember? You have to remember the following. One, when it comes to a loan, remember that your loan is a liability and by definition, when we talk about a non-current liability, we are saying that the loan will be repaid over a period greater than 12 months. So, break the loan up into its two components. And what are the two components? One is your non-current liability, that means greater than 12 months. And the second one is your current liability, meaning less than 12 months. In other words, in other words, Whenever you're faced with a loan in your balance sheet, look for information. What are you looking for? Let's go back to the question and see. It tells us there that these monthly payments include the interest and the capital repayments of the loan, a total of 105,600. Okay? So that was the interest plus the capital portion of my loan. And, you know, critical. When it comes to accounting, what do we specify? We say RTFQ. Let's go further. The monthly capital repayments of the loan will remain constant until the loan is fully repaid on the 30th of June. In other words, the capital portion of the loan that will be repaid over the next financial year will remain constant. Now watch this here. We have paid a total of 105,600. So 105,600, right? That's the total amount that we have repaid minus the interest of 57,600. Remember that's given information. Will give me a figure of 48,000 Rand. Now, what is the 48,000 Rand? Obviously, the 48,000 Rand is the capital portion of the loan that you have repaid. In other words, in other words, watch, when I'm working with my loan, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say my loan balance at the end of the year is 336,000. Watch the layout, please, guys. Very important. Open my bracket. 336,000. Okay, that's my closing balance. That's the balance that I have in my loan account. Minus, remember we worked out a calculation. What was my calculation? I said, take my total amount that I repaid, which was 105,600. There it is, okay, on my calculator. Minus the interest portion, on the, and the interest portion that was capitalized was 57,600, as you can clearly see. So I subtract that from my capital portion, or the, por or the portion that was repaid, and I'm left with a balance of 48,000. So therefore, 336 minus 48,000, okay, and 336,000, minus the 48,000 will now give me a figure of 288,000. What is the 288,000? That is the portion of my non-current liability. 
What do we know by definition? A non-current liability is that portion of the loan that is repayable over a period greater than 12 months. Now, look at your current liability. Once you have subtracted that component from your non-current liability, you need to put it somewhere. It needs to go somewhere else. Why? Because it has shifted from being a non-current liability to being a current liability. And therefore, you have an item called a short-term loan or the current portion of your loan. Right? And here you can clearly see that that features under current liabilities and the amount is 48,000 rand. Simple, guys. When it comes to a loan, break the loan up into two components. What are my two components? The non-current liability, as you can see, payable over a period greater than 12 months, right? And the short-term loan would then feature under current liabilities on the face of my balance sheet, and the, item, the amount there would be 48,000 rand. So now, when it comes to a loan, remember the trick. Two legs, non-current and the current, separate that loan. Notice something else that I've done here. Whenever you work in the balance sheet or in the income statement or anywhere else in your accounting paper, show calculations. Why? Because you get part marks for your calculations. So make sure that you show your calculations. Okay, done and dusted. Let's go to the next one. Now the question says, one third of the fixed deposit matures on the 31st of August 2013. The fixed deposit is valued at 60,000 Rand. Okay. Once again, what do we know about a fixed deposit? A fixed deposit would fall under the category of a financial asset. Therefore, on the face of my balance sheet, you will notice here, on the face of my balance sheet, I have an item that says financial assets fixed deposit. Here again, be careful. Whenever it comes to a fixed deposit, separate the fixed deposit into two components. What are the two components? Once again, let's look at the fixed deposit account. There's my fixed deposit account. Remember that it is an asset and it has a debit balance. Obviously, assets have debit balances. Therefore, when I work with my asset, remember, I need to separate it once again into the two components. What are the two components? One, which has a maturation period of greater than 12 months. And number two, the one that will mature within the next financial period that is within 12 months. So separate it again into two components. Let's go back to the question to identify what we need to do. One third of the fixed deposit will mature on the 31st of August 2013. That means within the next financial period, you're going to get one third of that fixed deposit maturing. So separate the fixed deposit. Break it up into two components. What are the two components? The component greater than 12 months and less than 12 months. Watch this here. So in my fixed deposit, we have at Supra Bank, once again, I open my bracket. Start off with a given figure of 60,000. There's my 60,000. And I'm told one third of that figure, obviously a third of 60,000 is 20,000. So you subtract the 20,000 from that figure to give you a final answer of 40,000 where, watch this, under my financial asset, I now know that my fina financial asset has a balance of 40,000 rand. Remember something else. This appears on the face of my balance sheet. Okay. Now, where will the 20,000 go to? 
All right, let's sort out the 20,000. Let's sort out the 20,000. Let's create some space there. Okay, the 20,000 rand, which will become available to you in the form of cash within 12 months, will now feature in my note cash and cash equivalents. Okay, remember this, guys, that your cash and cash equivalents is a note to your balance sheet. However, you find examiners sometimes asking you not to draw up the notes to the balance sheet, but rather to show calculations on the face of the balance sheet. Therefore, under your item, cash and cash equivalents, you would open up your bracket, okay? Let's identify the items that would go under cash and cash equivalents. Remember, it will be your fixed deposit maturing within 12 months. In our example here, it would be the figure of 20,000 Rand. Plus, what else would you have? You would have your bank, if it is favorable. What else would you include in there? Your petty cash, your cash float, all your cash items would feature under the item cash and cash equivalents. Okay, got that. So separation, in our example here, what have we now done? We have separated the fixed deposit into two components. What are those two components? This one here, greater than 12 months. The 20,000 Rand, less than 12 months. Let's, let's show you how practical and how, what's the rationale for doing this here. If you're a reader of this balance sheet, immediately you can tell yourself, okay, fine. In this business here, there's an amount of 40,000 Rand in a fixed deposit to which we will not have access within the next financial period. Yes, we will have access to 20,000 Rand, which will mature. So you can you see, it, it, it's, it's providing information to the reader. And in that way, you, will, you understand why there's always logic in what we do in accounting. We do it. Accountants do it with logic. Okay, so that was the fixed deposit. Let's look at another, another question. The following balances appeared in the books on the 28th of February, 2013. You had a figure for creditors control of 720,000. And you have a figure for cash at bank, 66,000, which is favorable because they're not giving you any further information. So you assume that that is a debit balance. But remember, whenever it comes to bank, what is important for you to note is that what is the status of my bank account? Is my bank account favorable or is my bank account unfavorable? Why? Because if my bank account is favorable, then, then, it's, then it's an asset. But if my bank account is unfavorable, then my bank account is definitely a liability. So keep that in mind. Remember, when I'm dealing with bank, I must have my wits about me in deciding whether to check and see, is it an asset or a liability? What are we told? We are told that on the 20th of February, it was established that a check issued to a creditor was post-dated for the 15th of April to the value of 50,000 Rand. Right. Now, obviously, this information you would glean from your bank reconciliation statement. You would find it there. It would say debit outstanding checks, checks not presented for payment. In this case here, it is an, uh, it's a, it's a post-dated check that we have issued. Now the question that you need to ask yourself is in reality, have we paid the creditor the amount of 50,000 Rand? And the answer, great 12s, is an emphatic no. We have not paid. Why? Yes, we have paid by making an entry in our journals, in our CPJ. We recorded the payment, but the actual payment, the money has not left our bank account. And that is important. And there's no way it can leave our account. Why? Because the check is post-dated. Therefore, what do we do? And it's very simple. 
It's very simple. If you just remember it like this here, what is the entry? The entry is debit bank and credit your creditor's control. Okay, so when I say debit bank, look at your bank account. And you can see that your bank account was, was a favorable 66,000 Rand. Therefore, under cash and cash equivalents, it's 66,000. When I say debit bank, it means I'm increasing my bank plus the 50,000 Rand of the post data check. And at the same time, when it comes to trade and other payables, we say the balance was 720,000 Rand. And credit creditors control, so I add it to my creditors control, and the amount is 50,000 Rand. Watch here, watch this very closely. Because bank was favorable, and by me debiting bank, I would increase the balance of my bank account, okay? And creditors control, by crediting it, I'm increasing my liability plus 50,000 Rand. But please take into consideration that if my bank account was in overdraft, then definitely you would not be doing what I've done here. Why? Then you would reduce the value of your overdraft. What do we mean by that? Watch this here. If your bank account has a credit balance, and if you are debiting it now with 50,000 Rand, then clearly you can see you are reducing your overdraft. What you have to remember, the entry is a debit to bank and a credit to your creditor's control. We've come to the end of our show. Thank you so much, Mindsetters, for joining me and for chatting to me during the show. Remember to visit our website, learn.mindset.co.za, to get your notes and to watch the videos from the term. Goodbye.